Hello students, I'm Imgo Dunlapungan from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today I'm going to speak on the module Discordance Hypothesis from the paper Human Origin and Evolution. Well, the learning objectives of the modules are number one, to describe discordance hypothesis, number two, to understand the nutritional imbalances between the past and the present, number three, to describe reasons for the evolutionary discordance hypothesis, number four, to know about factors that lead to discordance hypothesis, number five, to understand impact of nutritional changes in the lifestyle of humankind, number six, to describe the archaeological evidences to support primitive dietary evidences, number seven, to learn the importance of nutritional guidelines to promote health and livelihood. During the past 30 years, health promotion advice, especially that involving nutrition, has been primarily on epidemiological research findings. Epidemiology has been by far the dominant force in the field of disease prevention. Grant funding, academic publications, official recommendations, conferences and popular press accounts related to personal health all reflect an underlying fact that the epidemiological method will ultimately prevail. However, in terms of health promotion, prevail means reducing the incidence or prevalence of targeted disease conditions. However, epidemiological record when viewed from this bottom line perspective has been unimpressive. Essential hypertension, obesity, diabetes mellitus, depression, age-related fractures, melanoma, breast cancer, asthma all occur more frequently now than they did 30 years ago. It probably may be due to paradigm shift. Evolutionary health promotion of the ancestral human lifestyle offers a potential alternative that could make a vital contribution. This candidate paradigm arises from the discordance hypothesis that focuses on dissonance between our genetic heritage and our contemporary lifestyle. The human genome was selected in adaptation to stone age living circumstances culminating in the appearance of behaviorally modern humans between 100,000 and 50,000 years ago. Before that time, human ancestors, like all other organisms, adapted to changing environmental conditions mainly by genetic evolution. However, for humans during the past 50 million years ago, adaptation has increasingly involved cultural modification. Since the appearance of agriculture about then, million years ago, there have been few generally recognized genetic changes. For example, the hemoglobinobetes, adult lactose tolerance, etc. To an overwhelming degree, our genome and its epigenetic regulatory mechanisms remain adapted for a Paleolithic lifestyle. While our genes have been relatively constant, our culture has changed to an almost indescribable extent. This has produced discordance or mismatch between our genes and our lives, and this discordance promotes the chronic degenerative diseases that are responsible for most morbidity, mortality, and health expenditure in developed nations. Differences in reproductive experience, physical activity, psychosocial factors, microbial infractions, and toxin allergen exposure all play important role in evolutionary discordance theory. Now let us see discordance hypothesis. From an evolutionary point of view, most complex diseases appear as a result of imbalance or mismatch between our genetic makeup and the conditions of our westernized 21st century lifestyle. The basic conditions are that the contemporary human genome was selected over thousands of millennia during which our ancestral line existed as pre-human primates who became increasingly human-like until during the period between 100 and 50,000 years ago. They became behaviorally modern and lived as equivalent of hunter-gatherers 
which was studied during the last century. The genetic makeup of humans, especially that concerns our core metabolic and physiologic characteristics, has changed very little between the emergence of agriculture roughly 10,000 years ago and the present. On the other hand, cultural evolution during this past 10,000 years has progressed at an ever-accelerating rate, the resulting dissonance between what amount of Stone Age genes and Space Age lives foster development of multiple health diseases or disorders ranging from the potentially life-threatening that is cancer, pulmonary emphysema and heart attacks to the more mundane but still costly and uncomfortable conditions such as acne, high frequency, hearing loss, high pressure, myopia and dental caries. These conditions make up the discordance hypothesis and is currently is that the afflictions of affluence might best be prevented by reinforcing the essentials of our ancestral living pattern into our contemporary lives, that is ideally planting the best from the past with best from the present. Nutritional comparisons and evolutionary pre-agricultural diets for health promotion. Assessing the nutrition of early behaviorally modern humans requires assessment of data from diverse anthropological and archaeological sources. Radioisotopic analysis of human skeletal remains and evaluation of archaeological finds that is bones of animals and fish consumed Botanical remains, implements, paintings, etc. are essential elements for the studies of recent hunter-gatherer subsistence patterns. Such ancestral humans were the best, if imperfect, surrogates for Paleolithic foragers. Therefore, proximate analysis of the game, aquatic resources and uncultivated plant foods they used have provided vital data. Given the indirect, incomplete nature of the evidence has consistently revealed important differences between ancestral and contemporary human nutrition. Now let us see the implications of early hominin diets and discordance hypothesis. Total fat intake. Hunter-gatherers consumed the total edible food available from game animals, not just that in muzzle meat, Hence, the estimate for total ancestral fat intake is about 35%. Fat intake for Paleolithic hunter-gatherer vary drastically with latitude. The 35% estimate is for Stone Ages in Northeast Africa, the region currently thought most pertinent to establishment of the contemporary human genome. A total fat intake of 35% is at the upper limit of the acceptable range proposed recently by the Institute of Medicine, 20% to 35% and above the 30% upper limit set by numerous other authoritative organizations. Saturated fats. Fat, even though provided a substantial proportion of total energy for stone ages, the contribution of saturated fat was lower than in the average Western diet. American adults obtain 11% to 12% of total dietary energy from saturated fat. Partially acculturated Greenland Eskimos obtain 8.54% and the estimate for Paleolithic humans is lower still, perhaps 7.5%. While its composition very seasonally, the fate of game animals, including that from muzzle meat, brain, organs, bone marrow, and storage depots, tends to have more mono and polyunsaturated fatty acid and less saturated fatty acid than is found in supermarket meal. Early recommendations for saturated fat intake were less than 10% of total energy. It is now suggested that neither a specific recommended dietary allowance nor a tolerance upper intake level rises coronary heart diseases risk. Trans fatty acids. 
Ancestral humans did obtain a minimal amount of trans fatty acids from mother's milk during infancy and formed the flesh of certain herbivores, but the total from these sources was a small fraction of American consumption, which approaches 2% of total caloric intake. In addition, most trans fatty acids from Ruminance is converted after absorption into conjugated linoleic acid isomers, which appear to have anti neoplastic and anti heterogenic properties. Now, let us see polyunsaturated fats. In the United States, the total polyunsaturated acid consumption is estimated to average about 15 gram per deciliter with omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acid intake about 10 times that of omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids. The best available estimate of ancestral intake suggests that total bufa intake was nearly twice present levels due almost entirely to more omega-3 bufa so that omega-6 omega-3 ratio was closer to unity perhaps 2 is to 1. However, current recommendations are much different about 8 is to 1. Most contemporary omega-6 and omega-3 bofa intake occurs as 18 carbon omega-6 linoleic acid and 18 carbon omega-3 A linoleic acid. This can be converted slowly to longer chain derivatives era chitonic acid, ecosepintenoic acid, and tocosahexanoic acid. Now let us see the dietary cholesterol. The cholesterol level intake was generally greater among recent hunter and cattle people than that of the Americans because of high consumption of animal flesh, whether from fat or lean animals, all cell membranes contain cholesterol. Nevertheless, mean total serum cholesterol levels for hunter and gatherer people averaged 123 mg percent, which was 200 to 210 mg for Americans. Hunter gatherer cholesterol intake and SAM levels seem inversely related to American experience, aids to the growing evidence that dietary cholesterol is not a major independent driver of serum cholesterol. Now let us talk about the proteins. Hunter and gatherer protein consumption varies with latitude, but in equatorial savanna populations, those most like the core group of ancestral humans, protein provides about 30% of daily energy intake. This corresponds to consumption of just over 3 gram per kg, kg per deciliter for a person with 70 kg consuming about 3000 kilocalorie per deciliter. Such intake greatly exceeds the recommended daily requirement as 0.8 gram per kg per deciliter but is well within the range observed for free living higher primates about 1.6 to 5.9. Dietary fiber. Dietary fiber is not digested by mammalian enzymes and passes relatively intact into the large intestine where a proportion is fermented by gut microflora. Fruits and vegetables contain fiber more completely fermentable than that found in cereals, a distinction which appears to influence the physiological and health effects related to fiber intake. The overall fermentability of ancestral dietary fiber would have much exceeded that typically found in today's fiber containing foods. Now, the energy here extrapolation from the estimated daily energy intake of foragers studied in the past century suggests that the taller and comparably active humans of 50,000 years ago probably consumed about 2,900 kilocalorie per deciliter average for men and women. However, it is suggested that the mean energy intake for Americans is much low, about 2,093 kilocalorie per deciliter. 
Nevertheless, recently studies hunter and gatherers have body mass indices averaging 21.6 which is well within the accepted normal range that is 18.5 to 25 kg per meter square. The American average is 26.5. Forager skin fold thickness are typically half or less than those of age mage contemporary North Americans. Further, the skeletal remains show that Paleolithic humans developed muscularity similar to that of today's superior athletes, substantially greater than that of typical males and females. These findings suggest our ancestors existed within a high energy throughout metabolic environment characterized by both greater caloric intake and greater caloric expenditure than is now the case. Most contemporary recommendations for energy intake revolve around consumption commensurate with energy expenditure so as to achieve energy balance assuming pre-existing desirable body weight that Americans are becoming ever more obese while consuming far less food energy than did ancestral humans is convincing evidence against the value of hypocaloric dieting and for increasing physical activity in our lives. The acid-based considerations. Ancestral diets were need-based yielding because of their vegetable and fruit content. They tended to drive systematic pH towards alkalinity. Conversely, the cereal grains and dairy foods that make up such a large proportion of contemporary diets are neat acid yielding and then to drive pH towards acidity. Homeostatic mechanisms ordinarily maintain pH at about 7.4 but over prolonged periods the corrective metabolic measures necessary to offset persistent acid-yielding diets have deleterious effects including urinary calcium loss to balance hydrogen ion excretion, accelerated skeletal calcium depletion, calcific urolithiasis, age-related muscle wasting, and progressive renal function deterioration. Reasons for discordance Hypothesis. It is generally accepted that current humans differ little genetically from ancestral Africans of 60,000 years ago, but further evidence bearing on this relationship would be welcome. Individuals who have lived as hunter and gatherer are rapidly disappearing and thus we need to access diet and health related information as quickly as feasible from those who remain. Paleolithic human's dietary cholesterol intake would have exceeded present intake but their consumption of serum cholesterol raising fat was lower in line with or slightly less than current recommendations. Their low levels of serum cholesterol should be considered the intriguing result of a natural experiment. Because adult stone agers are only high fiber uncultivated fruits and vegetables and high protein wild game, their fiber and protein intake would necessarily have far exceeded current consumption. Reconstructions of ancestral nutrition indicate a micronutrient intake much above contemporary recommendations. This fuels the argument that optimum levels of dietary vitamins and minerals exceed currently accepted minimum requirements. We suspect that ancestral intake of phytochemicals and antioxidants like that of micronutrients in general was greater in the Paleolithic than at present. Sodium intake now exceeds that of potassium a sticking reversal of prior human experience. The physiological effects of this electrolyte inversion deserve scrutiny. A potentially similar important concerns the impact of diet on the body's acid-base balance. That contemporary foods tend to drive systemic pH towards acidity, whereas those of Paleolithic humans had alkalinizing properties this is a fundamental difference with potentially major implications. 
The foraging existence necessitated high energy throughout. Hunter and gatherers, body composition and mass indices were almost always in the highly desirable range despite caloric intake well above the American average. The example suggests that effective prevention of obesity involves increasing physical activity more than the decreasing caloric intake. Archaeological evidence of early dietary patterns. Now, early hominins began eating things in a manner that leaves durable traces about 2.5 million years ago. Bones preserve cut marks that by their frequencies and locations tell us something about how hominins processed animals for food. Bone fracture patterns and elements found at archaeological sites can also provide clues to the sites and subsistence practices of early hominins. Despite debates about methods of acquisition, processing, and transport of carcasses, it is clear that by 2.5 million years ago, hominins at least occasionally consumed meat, marrow, and perhaps other tissues from a variety of animals. We can even begin to put together a species list of animals eaten by early hominins, which included mammals ranging from 10 kg to 2,500 kg. Larger concentrations of archaeological remains are known, beginning around the Pleistocene boundary, perhaps suggesting an increased reliance on such food by some hominins. The association of old one stone tools with large mammal bones bearing cut marks and percussion fractures confirmed the acquisition and almost certain consumption of animal products. Studies of non-human primate diets likewise provide potential insights into the diets of our ancestors. For example, African apps today have a penchant for easy-to-digest, sugar-rich foods. It is mostly at times of resource stress that gorillas fall back on tougher, lower-quality food resources. Early hominins too then may have preferred higher-quality food sources such as fruits except at crunch times. Some older developed this idea further, distinguishing different types of full-back foods. Her comparisons of chimpanzees and bonobos suggest possible links between biome variability, diet, and tool use by hominins. Now let us summarize the module. Thoughtful people interested in their own health typically pay careful attention to research findings and official recommendations about disease prevention. A New York Times observed, not surprisingly, inconsistency has been coupled with ineffectiveness. Many targeted conditions, including, for instance, breast cancer, type 2 diabetes, depression, and hypertension occur more frequently now than they did 20 years ago. The lifestyle of ancestral humans, that for which our genome was originally selected, could be considered a paradigmatic baseline. Deviation from the essentials of that experience appears to underlie the pathophysiology of chronic diseases propagation and conversely, behavior which tends to match the Stone Age lifestyle model is likely to forestall the development of chronic illness while positively enhancing health. The nutritional considerations presented here, that is, an approach to disease prevention based on the evolutionary discordance paradigm might operate. The first requirement would be to determine as accurately as possible the pertinent lifestyle characteristics of ancestral humans. Next, the health effects of deviation from and reversion towards this original biobehavioral parameters would require meticulous scientific investigation. Thereafter, those factors whose importance is supported by careful research would be promulgated as recommendations for healthy living. 
Finally, the fundamental rational research findings and actual recommendations would be integrated into an understandable, persuasive framework that the essentials of our ancestral lifestyle constitute a guide for healthy living in the present. The theoretical benefits of disease prevention are great, but today this potential has been unrealized and the health-conscious public deserves a fresh approach. A program of research and recommendations based on the evolutionary discordance paradigm might be a logical way to address this need. That's all for this. Evolutionary health promotion of the ancestral human lifestyle offers a potential alternative that could make a vital contribution. This candidate paradigm arises from the discordance hypothesis that focuses on dissonance between our genetic heritage and our contemporary lifestyle. The human genome was selected in adaptation to Stone Age living circumstances, culminating in the appearance of behaviorally modern humans between 100,000 and 50,000 years ago. Before that time, human ancestors, like all other organisms, adapted to changing environmental conditions, mainly by genetic evolution. However, for humans during the past 50 million years ago, adaptation has increasingly involved cultural modification. Since the appearance of agriculture about 10 million years ago, there have been few generally recognized genetic changes, for example, hemolo hemoglobinopathies, adult lactose tolerance, etc. To an overwhelming degree, our genome and its epigenetic regulatory mechanisms remain adapted for a Paleolithic lifestyle. While our genes have been relatively constant, our culture has changed to an almost indescribable extent. This has produced discordance or mismatch between our genes and our lives, and this discordance promotes the chronic degenerative diseases that are responsible for most morbidity, mortality, and health expenditure in developed nations. Differences in reproductive experience, physical activity, psychosocial factors, microbial infections, and toxin allergen exposure all play important role in evolutionary discordance theory. That's all for this module. Thank you.